In the last episode of History Traveler, we were in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, looking at what to do with three days in this destination location for any history enthusiast. And it, it is outstanding. They do a, a an out... <laughs> but there were some things that we left out of that episode, like where are you going to stay? And what are you going to eat? And what are some of the hidden gems that the casual tourist might not know about? Well, we're back with Jared Frederick from Real History and Matt Callery from Addressing Gettysburg to answer a few more questions about what you can do with three days in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. I've moved over now to a place called Barlow's Knoll, and this is where the, the Union 11th Corps under Oliver Otis Howard uh, ran into Ewell's 2nd Corps uh, for the Confederates. And when you come to Gettysburg, you're gonna see a lot of cannons, you're gonna see a lot of monuments, okay? So there are a lot of things here to interpret uh, the battle. Now, one thing that people typically overlook when they come to Gettysburg is that there, there's some urban combat that happens here too. Uh, the, the 11th Corps is gonna sweep right through the town of Gettysburg and the people here are gonna be deeply affected and the Confederates are gonna sweep right back. So so after you have your, your uh, tour with your licensed battlefield guide on the day one portion of the battlefield, well then I highly recommend looking into some of the local stories here at Gettysburg and how this battle affected the people who lived here. When people come to Gettysburg, it's very often to overlook the fact that the community itself was a battlefield. This was the home of 2,400 people, individuals from every walk of life, and oftentimes their very homes were caught in the middle of no man's land. We are here on a stretch of Washington Street within the borough of Gettysburg. Much of the first day's fighting happens uh, further in the direction behind me and to the west and it was through this very street where the United States Army withdrew after it was pushed off some of its locations and fled to rally on the high ground a little bit further to the south of us on Cemetery Hill. Among the homes caught in the crossfire throughout this three-day battle was the home of Jacob Stock also known as the Swan Inn in the Civil War era. And his family fled the home for a time and for his wife and his children, it seemed like the battle followed them almost as they moved from location to location. They didn't know when the next phase of the battle would take place. But as we look at all of these pockmarks in the side, uh, these serve as a rather terrifying, tangible reminder of the damage inflicted upon this community. And there's a very telling newspaper account from July 1863, which gives us some excellent perspective on the scene that greeted people here. This newspaper article indicated a brick house on Washington Street had eight holes through it. A shell bursting in the inside tore up the floors. A rebel sharpshooter was found stretched out in the attic with his head blown off. And so not only is there battle damage, but as is the case with the Shriver family as well, they sometimes had people literally dying in their houses and this is what they were coming back to. This is a segment of Gettysburg history that we should not soon forget. All those bullets flying around, it's a, it's a wonder they didn't ding up their satellite dish. <laughs> Luckily, they didn't have to worry about that too much. <laughs> now, if you come to Gettysburg, I'm assuming that you don't want to sleep in your car. So here are some places that I've stayed at personally that I would highly recommend while you're in Gettysburg. 
The Battlefield Bed and Breakfast is an outstanding location towards South Cavalry Field, which is a part of the battlefield that commonly gets overlooked. This is a historic building that served as the headquarters for General Wesley Merritt during the battle and is really just a, a wonderful place to stay. If you move into town, Federal Point Inn might be one of the fanciest hotels that I've ever stayed at anywhere. I uh, really enjoyed the, the stays that I've had at the Federal Point, and it's also located really close to the Day One battlefields. If you move into town, there are some other historic buildings that you can stay at, uh, the Row House being one of them. You can find the Row House on Airbnb, uh, a really uh, amazing structure that has battle damage on it and is conveniently located to a, a lot of things right there in town. Uh, another place that I've stayed at several times is the Gettysburg Academy. Again, this is a historic building that was there during the battle and uh, has battle damage. As a matter of fact, there's an artillery shell that's still lodged in the side of the building. And uh, I've always enjoyed my stays at the Gettysburg Academy. And then if you move a little bit further south, well, there's the Farnsworth House Inn. Again, this is another building that has a lot of damage. There were Confederate sharpshooters in the attic. Uh, the food there is great. And another thing that's really nice about the Farnsworth is if you go right across the street, you get the best ice cream in town at Mr. G's. But all of these are amazing places that I would highly recommend. Now in the last episode, we spent a little bit of time with Matt Callery of addressing Gettysburg at Culp's Hill. Here are a few more things to look at when you go to Culp's Hill. Uh, so some of the hidden things that you might not know about here on Culp's Hill, which I think are cool, is first of all, we're within the Union breastworks, um, and the Confederates would have been coming down from behind us, but that's not important right now because this isn't a history video. These rocks here, this one right here in front of me, and that big one over there. Um, back after the battle, when people started coming here, Culp's Hill was a very popular place for people to come. Uh, one of the main reasons was because you could see the battle damage in the trees. And so some enterprising businessmen decided, well, let's paint some advertisements, or advertisements, if you will, on some boulders. And so there used to be a painted advertisement here for liver pills. And up on the top of that big rock there, the, that cluster of rocks, was an advertisement for uh, bitters, Hooflin's bitters. And uh, yeah, so you would have been coming by here in your little horse and buggy, and you look there and go, oh, Hooflin's bitters, let's go get some bitters and have some drinks, and then get some liver pills for our livers because we just drank a lot. So that's one of the things, people walk by this all the time, and they don't really know what they're walking by. So that's one of the things that you could see when you come here to Culp's Hill. Another thing I love about Culp's Hill is that you can see the remnants of the breastworks that the Union troops sheltered behind during the battle. Now, behind me, you can just see a little mound of dirt, but that is what remains of them. I've heard from some guides that they're not all the original, but they're on the original line, that they were built up in later years. But recently we had the park archaeologist on the show, or the parkeologist as I like to call her, and, uh, and, and she said that when they were clearing the slopes below us, uh, they have to do archaeological digs before they disturb the ground. And they went up along the breastworks to see what they could find. And it was pretty cool because after they had gone through, they'd marked every place they found a bullet and or, or something, not necessarily a bullet, but they found something um, and with little white flags. So it was a cool visual for me to come here and see all these little white flags on the face of the breastworks showing where the Confederate bullets landed or where Union troops might have dropped some of their bullets or something. But a breastwork is not like a trench. A trench is dug, breastworks are put on top of the ground and they're piled up about breast high and then they would put what's called a head log on the top so there's just enough room for you to get your rifle and face out there. So a lot of the wounds from the Culp's Hill part of the fighting were upper body because that was really all that was exposed. So head, shoulders, neck, things like that. While you're in Gettysburg, I'm assuming that you're gonna wanna eat at some point. 
Uh, a few places that I would recommend. One is Getty's Burger. In my opinion, it's the best burger in town and their sweet tea is excellent. Uh, another place that I frequent pretty often while I'm here is the Hoof, Fin and Fowl. That's a favorite of Eric Dorr. Uh, their fish and chips are excellent. I, I've never had a bad meal there. And another really nice restaurant that's uh, maybe a little bit more upscale and in a very historic building in Gettysburg is the Dobbin House. Okay, so those are uh, just a few suggestions on some of the places that you can visit while you are here on a three-day trip to Gettysburg. Uh, now, Jared and I were just talking, I've been here probably a dozen times now, and I'm going around and I'm saying, oh, I haven't been there yet, I haven't seen that. Uh, so anyway, Jared's been here a, a lot more than me, so he has a few more suggestions on things that I may have missed that you might want to check out if you come to Gettysburg. All right, I lied. I'll get to Jared here in just a second, but there's one other thing that I forgot to mention. Uh, earlier, I, I mentioned some things about getting a licensed battlefield guide here at Gettysburg, uh, but I, I wanted to say that if you happen to have mobility issues uh, and, and maybe can't you know, get off the road or, or get off the, the path for whatever reason, uh, there's also an auto tour route that the National Park Service has that is really good. And uh, also something that you might consider is uh, Gettysburg battlefield bus tours uh, where you can also have access to a licensed battlefield guide get on a double-decker bus and and get a, a really good tour of the battlefield so anyway just a few more options all right here's Jared I've been coming to Gettysburg for the majority of my life and one of the beautiful things about it is that I always find something new and interesting to do it's a very happening place for the historian community if you're looking for a few other sites to possibly check out during your visit, uh, I would definitely recommend Eisenhower National Historic Site. That was the only home that President Dwight Eisenhower owned on his own. He purchased it in 1950. It was his summer White House. It was his retirement home and it offers this very unique overlap of the 1960s and the 1860s when you go and visit it. If you're traveling with younger people, there's of course not only the Shriver House Museum, which shows the story of the battle through the eyes of a young family, um, but there is also the Rupp House, uh, which is a 19th century home on Baltimore Street that is specifically designed for young people. And young people get to go in it for free, and that is always a wonderful thing. Um, a little bit further to the south on Steinware Avenue, there's the Gettysburg Heritage Center, which is likewise very family friendly, has a great gift shop as well. And if you're a follower of the American Battlefield Trust, you get to see their wonderful uh, animated map presentation on a really big screen that plays in the Gettysburg Heritage Center. These are just three more possibilities and there are a lot more to check out. If you want a full comprehensive overview, a good place to start is the website Destination Gettysburg, which is the local tourism bureau. And that can give you a full option of itinerary items. To really get yourself prepared for your next trip to Gettysburg, check out our previous tour video. And if you really want to get the full Gettysburg treatment, be sure to click on our Gettysburg playlist.